Hello Champions and Future Champions. Hello Chessmood family, GM Gabuzian is here with you. And in this video guys, we are going to make a coverage for the April month daily lessons tests. So we are gonna see the answers. Let's go ahead and begin with our first position. This is a test position for a daily lesson with a Grandmaster. It's black to move. And it feels like we are gonna be having some tactical options. White pieces are now safe, but there are some pieces that potentially can be hanging. Bishop is protected with the queen, rook is protected with the pawn and the rook. But also we are gonna have several attackers. And for this reason, tactical knight b3 move is working on the first move. Now white has two continuations. If white is just taking rook c6, we'll take knight d4. Now both of white rooks are under attack with the knight. If white is trying to pin the black knight on d4 playing rook d2, black is easily winning through. Queen takes, rook takes d4, rook d4, queen d4 and queen c5. Black is trading off the queens and gonna be winning with an extra pawn in the endgame, so it's easily winning. So after knight b3 move, now we are going to see what's happening if white takes queen b3. It's a little more complex now. If we take, white will just take with the rook and we will not have much. So we need to pin these rooks on this diagonal. We are playing rook d8. The problem is that if rook c6 and we play queen b3, white has rook c8 check and suddenly white is gonna get the winning advantage. So after rook c6 here, black is having a strong continuation, guys. You can pause the video and try to find it for black. Here black is taking queen d4 check. We are going to use the location of white queen. How you will see right now. King f1 will play queen d1 check. So basically we are pinning this rook. And after king f2 we take rook takes c6. This queen is now under attack if white is taking on c6. So this doesn't work. And because of this black is winning again. Getting a huge material advantage. And would very much weaken white king. Let's now go ahead and see the next position guys. This is a test position for the daily lesson endgame tactics. It's white to move and we are gonna find some hanging pieces around black king. So the beginning is with bishop e6. Black now has three replies. Pawn takes e6, bishop takes g5 and king takes e6. Let's one by one cover all of them. So f takes e6, we have rook h7 check. This king cannot no longer protect the bishop and it's just going to eat. Bishop takes f6, so this is great for white. After bishop e6, if black is playing bishop takes g5, white has intermediate move before taking on g5. White takes bishop c8, so now this is hanging and white just took the rook. And after takes and takes on g5, white will have an extra exchange. And after bishop takes e6 on the first move, if black is playing king takes e6, we have rook h6 pinning this bishop, taking it and winning a pawn. So all of this is great for white. And at the beginning, bishop e6 move is leading to a nice advantage. Doesn't matter if it's an end game, guys. You should always be looking for some tactical options. Let's go ahead and see the next position. Dear players, this is the test position for a daily lesson end game tactics part 2. It's white to move. We are having very strong pieces aiming for black's queen side where black king is located. As well, we have a very beautiful tactical option, beginning with bishop b6 move. Now this rook is under attack, black has two moves. Black can take on b6 or play rook d7. Now we are going a6, trying to weaken this knight's position. The thing is that after a b6, we have a7. Now white wants to promote the queen, so logically black takes knight a7, but after simply bishop d7, bishop takes and rook a7, White is having an extra exchange and a winning position. So this doesn't work. But as well, it doesn't work that after bishop b6 move, black is taking a takes b6. So we are just taking. After rook d7, it's even more simple. We take on c6, b6 and rook a8 check. And after king b7, taking just rook h8. Again, winning an exchange and winning the game. One more time, I will repeat myself. Doesn't matter if it's an endgame or not. You can always be looking for the tactical opportunities. Let's go ahead and see the next position. 
This is a test for the daily lesson exchange an important bishop. In this position, white is ahead in development. Plex queenside is not developed yet. White is having a huge pressure due to the activity of the pieces. But this bishop on c8 is protecting black queenside pawns and is making this structure a little bit solid. So, we're easily figuring out gonna go after this bishop on c8. White can try to play knight a7 and take this bishop on c8, but there is knight d4 which is also allowing black some activity. So for this reason, in the first position, white is playing knight b6, attacking the rook and the bishop at the same time. And only after rook b8 now, white goes knight to a7. The thing is, if now black goes knight to d4, the c8 will be hanging because we are going to be taking with the knights when black is protecting with the rook, so we will be winning the exchange. Now black plays knight d6 and again here white can play very strong. You can pause the video and think what to play. White is taking knight a c8, knight c8 and knight d7, still winning the exchange. The important bishop is gone. And after rook a8, bishop b7 is just winning for white. So we destroy this bishop and weaken this pawn. Also, after knight d7, as it happened, knight d6, knight b8, and white is again an exchange up with the winning position. Sometimes we need to trade off some passive pieces which are protecting our opponent's position, guys. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson when to find Cheto your bishop. Here it's really obvious that white is having slightly better position due to bishop pair. Bishop on c1 is the bishop which black is missing. If we take it to e3 or f4 it's gonna be still taking a good position but some black pawns are gonna be little limiting it. Meanwhile if we go b3 and later on play bishop to b2, this bishop will be very, very strong on this long diagonal. So it's a reasonable choice to find shit on this bishop in this position. Let's now go ahead and see another test for the same daily lesson topic. Again, it's white to move and this time black is having bishop pair, but it doesn't actually make sense. Our bishop again will be nice located on f4, but pawn on d6 and h6 will be slightly limiting its abilities. Meanwhile, if we go b3, knight d6 and bishop b2, this bishop is becoming very very strong on this long diagonal again. So mostly bishops on the long diagonals are having the strongest spots. This is what we are calling fine chateau. And this is a very reasonable choice for white. After knight f5 trying to prevent the checkmate, queen d3 d6 and rook f1, white is having a very nice pieces when the strongest one is bishop on b2, making a huge pressure on black's kingside position, guys. Let's go ahead and see our next position. This is a test position, guys, for the daily lesson strange move order in the opening. Here white played knight g2. Usually white is going with bishop g2 and playing the main variation. If now black goes to d6, this will transpose to the main variations as well what we are playing in chess mode. But knight g2 is living without defense d3 and f3 squares at the same time. Note, this is not happening in the opening. So black is on time to play knight e5. Now we are threatening checkmates from both squares. If white goes here bishop g2, we give a check and this king is losing the castling option. As well, we will be able to take bishop on c1, which is a great piece. If white is going d3, knight f3 will be a checkmate. So here white is going knight f4, protecting both of these squares. But the thing is, this knight is having a very ugly position on f4. It's stopping the f4 advancement as well, just doing nothing. Because on d5, this knight doesn't have a good square, as pawn e6 move is always available. So black goes d6, d3 and h5, another strong move. We are using the fact that this knight cannot be fighting for this square as it usually happens when it's on f3. So we are going h5 trying to play h4. If here white goes h4, with knight f6 we will have a great control over g4 square. This is great for us. As well after h5, if white goes bishop g2, with h4 black is also obtaining nice control over the h file and pressure on white's kingside position. So in the openings, whenever you are facing strange moves like this, don't automatically go for the main lines. Take a look at it and maybe you will find a better available option. 
Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test for the daily lesson correct move order in calculation. It's white to move. Obviously, we are going to checkmate Black King soon because there are no pawns in front of it. But we should be careful. If we play Rook C4 right away, looking for Rook G4 checkmate, which seems very strong, suddenly this doesn't work. Black can play here Bishop E4, very strong move. This Bishop is going to go to G6 and cover this Black King. So we have to take it. If we take Rook E4, Rook C1 is winning for Black, so White is getting checkmated. If after bishop e4 we take with the pawn, black is able to take on c4 and win the rook, so we will have to give the perpetual check. But on top of that, black can just play queen d2, and slowly this queen will be covering black king, so white will be losing again. Queen g4, king h7, queen h5 and queen h6, and black rooks are gonna be occupying his first ranking soon, making a huge pressure on white. For this reason, at the beginning, instead of playing rook c4 right away, White is playing queen g5 check. This is the right order. Now after king h8, we go rook c4 already. And the thing is guys, that if bishop e4 now, we take rook e4, c1 square is protected and this rook can no longer checkmate. So followed by rook h4 checkmate, white is just winning. Very important to make your calculation in the right order guys. Let's go ahead to the next position. This is a test position for rook versus pawn end games. Here it's white to move. We have a passed pawn on e6, but it's prevented by the bishop on f6. If white now tries to play e7 and win the exchange, on top of that, that bishop e7 and rook f2 is trash, as well, black can play after e7, rook d2 check, king goes somewhere, and bishop takes e7. So black will be even keeping the bishop. For this reason, in the first position, instead of playing e7, which doesn't work, White plays rook f6. We are going to idea which we already learned. Rook takes an e7 and suddenly this pawn is gonna be unstoppable. After rook f5 check, as we know, we are going with our king to the second rank, which is gonna be winning. King d4. Rook f4 check, king d3. Rook f3 check and king e2. This rook can no longer go somewhere below and give a check. So next move, we are promoting a queen and just winning this game. Let's go ahead to see the next one, guys. This is a test for the daily lesson Queen Trap in Chess. In this position, black is having two pieces versus the rook. This will be great, because two pieces are usually stronger, but there is an exception in this position. Black queen is not located in a great spot, and white is suddenly gonna be trapping it. White plays rook a4. Idea is very simple, rook c4, rook c8. The problem is black can do nothing about it. Now if black goes queen to c7, we will just go rook c4, forcing this queen to go back. And after rook a4, black tried e4, but rook c4 is eventually winning. Rook c8 is coming. Knight e5, rook c8, queen a7, rook a8, and this queen is trapped in a very beautiful way. So white is winning. Very important to pay attention to opponent's pieces positions. This idea at the first look doesn't seem really obvious, but whenever you see it, rook a4, rook c4 and rook c8 is just very easily winning. Let's go ahead to see the next one. This is a test for the daily lesson how a grandmaster spots chess tactic. It's a little bit complex one. It's white to move and at the first move white is taking knight b5. We could have taken queen h5 check as an option, but we are postponing it, waiting a takes b5 to happen. Now we are only playing queen h5 check. What is the difference, guys? That now, whenever black goes queen to f7, this a file is already gonna be open. So now we can make a tactic, rook takes a8, bishop a8, now we got rid of defender of d8 square. And here we have rook d8 check, king takes d8 and queen f7. Here black can be taking on h4, but white first of all will gain many many pawns and sometimes queen is gonna be much stronger than the three pieces are, so we can take on f6, take on e5 and have much more pawns, so this will be a great advantage. As well let me tell you that after queen h5 check, if black is going knight to g6, we are taking rook a8, bishop a8 and knight g6 now. And after queen f7, when black is pinning the knight, we have again very strong move queen h3. Another time we see importance of the absence of black rook on a8 square, so this c8 is unprotected. 
Here, black cannot take hg6 because rook is hanging. And let's put it on the board if black takes queen g6. Queen d7 is a knife checkmate. So this is again winning for white guys. Let's go ahead to see the next one. And I truly hope you liked how Grandmasters are spotting tactics. This is a test for the daily lesson, fix pawns and create a weak square. In this position is white to move. White has a positionally big advantage, passed pawn on the d5, space advantage, strong pawns. Meanwhile, black has some weaknesses. Mostly, we are going to focus on our game on the queen side. Black may try to create some passed pawn on the king side as well. So for this reason, at the beginning, white goes rook h2, forcing this pawn to move, going to h6. And only now white is switching to the queen side, playing with b4, takes king b4. Slowly white will try to improve here and use this passed pawn. Whenever we are fixing it this way, we are basically staying pawn up, because now we have a passed pawn in the center. Meanwhile, black's extra pawn on the king side is just useless, guys. Let's go ahead to see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson Queen Trap in Chess Part 2. It's white to move. Obviously black queen is not having a very safe life now. If we try to call king h2, this is too slow and doesn't work. Due to f6, g4 and queen f7, and black queen is safe. So for this reason, instead of playing slow king h2 move, white is instantly going for g4. Queen h3 is only available square. Now knight g5. And after queen h4, we just go king to g2. The idea is rook h1 and this queen will be easily trapped. If black here plays d4, trying to play bishop c6, this doesn't make sense. We just play rook h1, bishop c6 check, and f3. And after queen takes g4, we are just gonna go king to f2. This queen is under attack, it doesn't have any squares to run away, so black has to give away the piece which will be winning for white. For this reason, after king g2, black is trying h5 to take queen g4 or pawn takes g4 on the next move. But we are using the fact that rook on h8 is hanging. Going rook h1, queen takes g4, and queen takes g4. So after takes, we are not winning the queen, but we are winning the rook on h8 square, which is more than enough to win this game. With this beautiful idea with trapping the queen, white is forcing black to give away a huge material. Let's go ahead to see the next one. This is a test position for rook versus two separated pawns and game. Previously we have seen these pawns much farther from each other. Now they are a bit closer, and I asked you whether it makes sense or not. This position is already winning for white. So white is just going king to d6. If now black is going rook to f8, we are not going obviously king c7 because rook c7 check is just making a draw. After rook f8 we are going king e7 and just promoting. And after king d6 if black is going rook to b8 we are doing the same to this side, going king to c7 and pushing the pawn. So whenever pawns are located already so much close to each other, it's gonna be winning for the sides with the pawns. I mean in the conditions when black like king is far and we are supporting our pawns with our king. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson rook versus pawn, different pawns promotion. We have seen previously that whenever the pawn was on the A file, it was losing. And whenever the pawn was on the B file, it was drawing for black. And it's black to move in this position. But guys, this is a little bit tricky one. So here, if you thought that king A4 is the move which makes a draw, keeping the D pawn. This was a wrong direction. Because this time white king is gonna get closer. Whenever you go king to a4, you are losing one tempo with the king, as well you are using time for your pawn promotion. So, white goes king d6, before king c5. b3 king c4 and white is on time to stop this pawn. This is winning for white. King a3 and king c3, so the pawn is successfully stopped. For this reason, king a4 is wrong, and here black is just taking b takes a4. King d6. And a very important move again. You can, by the way, pause the video and think how to make a draw here for black. Black goes now king to b4. Since king b3 is going to be losing, king c5 a3, 
rook h3 king b2 and after king b4 we have a clearer transposition to the losing line so after king d6 and king b4 black is shouldering white king preventing it from joining the game so after rook h4 check king b5 and king d5 a3 is easily making a draw for black these rook and pawn endgames guys are very tricky and shouldering is one of the most powerful weapons for the defending side Let's now go ahead and see the next position. This is a test for the daily lesson how to exploit a weak pack rank. In this position, both sides are having very good pieces. White's first rank is weakened, but the thing is, white is the side having double pawns, and black's last rank is weakened as well. So it's white to move, and we are the side who is gonna be making use of this weakness. Let me just tell you, this tactic wouldn't be possible if black had some pawn on h6 located. Very often when I am streaming or playing chess, I'm trying to dedicate a good timing and just open up some window for my king. Have it in mind, guys. Here, white is playing very strong queen a7 move. The thing is that now if black takes, rook takes d8, rook takes, and rook takes d8 is a checkmate. So this doesn't work. After queen a7, if black tries to take on d2, we can take queen c7, because this rook on d1 is protected. So, after queen a7, black has to go queen a5, running away with the queen and trying to keep an eye on rook on d8. We'll take queen takes a6. Now, the same idea is coming. Black cannot take, because this is hanging. Queen c7, and one more time we go queen a7. There is a difference already. No pawn on a6, so this queen is not having any available squares. For this reason, black is just losing. Rook d2, queen c7, and after rook d1 and bishop d1, white is staying with an extra queen, easily winning this game. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for outflanking in rook versus pawn and game daily lesson. It's white to move. If we try to go with our king to g5 or h5, this king will be shouldering ours. For this reason, white is going to use a very simple trick which you already learned from the daily lesson, outflanking. White goes king f5, f3 and king e4. King is going to the other side and is easily stopping the pawn. After f2, king e3, king g2 and king e2, white is just winning, this pawn is stopped. It's gonna be taken on the next few moves and white will win with an extra rook. I hope you like this simple trick in the endgames guys. It's very very important, especially against shouldering idea. Let's now go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson activate the king in endgame. Here white can be simply castling, but this king is going far from the center. Usually it's logical and in some situations we'll have to do it but in this spot we're having a nice square for our king which is e3 square so we go king e2 bishop b7 king e3 here our king is attacking this pawn protecting pawn on f2 as well in some situations controlling d2 square so black rooks cannot be activated through the d file it's doing a lot of work and it's really reasonable to have it in the center after rook a d8, we are having time to play a4, because our king is protecting this side. We will try to play even a5, open up the queen side and use our rooks there, making a pressure on black weakened pawn. As well, this king all the time supporting the knight to take the pawn on e4. So king on e3 in the center is very much required for white guys. Let's now go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson challenging fine chateau bishop. Our bishop on h6 is limiting moves of black king. Bishop on h8 is occupying last available square. And due to this, white here is having a very nice tactic. White plays. Queen takes a5. Queen takes. And knight c6. Now this e7 spot is under double attack. And after knight e7 it will be a checkmate. On top of that, black queen on a5 is hanging as well, and in a single move black cannot be protecting this queen and protecting e7 pawn. So for this reason white is winning a piece. Very simple, but at the same time super strong tactical opportunity. 
So whenever financial the bishop is taking square next to the king, it's reasonable to think about some tactical options, guys. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test for the daily lesson shouldering in rook versus pawn and game. It's white to move. We need to advance our pawn in order to make a draw. P6 now doesn't work due to rook b8 and the pawn will be lost. If we try to go king c4, black king goes to e4, king c5, king e5, and after b6 and rook c8, black king is on time to join the game. For this reason, king c4 at the beginning doesn't work. And we are playing much smarter, going king to d4, shouldering black king, doesn't allowing it to join the game very easily. King f4, we go b6. If now king f5, we would go king to d5. So, after rook d8 check, we go king c5. And after king e5, we have the same position that previously, but with white to move. As if it's black to move, black will be winning with rook c8 check. Now white is making a draw with king c6. King e6, king c7, and after rook h8 playing b7. Very important to have this shouldering in our minds, guys. This is one of the most powerful weapons in the rook end games. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson anchoring technique. It's white to move. This test is a bit tricky, cause we know usually when we are trying to use the anchoring, we are giving a check and trying to put our opponent king in a bad spot. So rook c8 check, king d3, rook b8 will be an anchoring example. But this is wrong this time, because black goes king to c3, this king will be shouldering our king in the future, and b3 and b2 is easily making a draw. So this doesn't work. For this reason, at the beginning, instead of playing rook c8 check and trying to do the anchoring, simply white is winning with king e4. Our king is on time to join the pawn. The purpose of this test was to show you you shouldn't be automatically do whatever is the title, guys. Anchoring was the topic, and anchoring test was the title for this position. But always take a look at the game. Now king e4 is just winning. King c3, rook c8. King d2, rook b8. King c3, and white is on time with king e3 move. Followed by rook c8 check and king d2. White king is joining the game, and this rook endgame is gonna be lost. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson what is fundamental defense. Here, black is attacking white's pawn on a2. We need to take care of it somehow, so we go king b1, a logical move. And bishop e6 is happening. Now, if we play b3, which seems to be really logical, black would go queen to b6 and suddenly attack with a5 and a4, opening up the a-file with very unclear consequences. For this reason, after bishop e6, we are playing knight c1, which is much more fundamental defense. We are not allowing black to get any keys to this position. When we go b3, a5, a4 is guaranteeing black the open file. Meanwhile, if black tries to do it now, plays a5, a4 and a3, we will be able to play b3 and keep the queen side closed. So now white is already going to attack with h4 and h5. Knight c1 is a very logical defense without giving black any further counterplay. Let's go ahead and see the next one, guys. This is a test position for a daily lesson ugly but fundamental defense. It's white to move. Our knight on a4 is under attack. We have two available squares. It's gonna be c1 and a1. If we go knight to c1, black plays knight c5. Black has two heavy pieces on the c-file, and our only defender of c2 spot is this bishop on d3. So, if we try to attack now with h5, on the next move black is destroying this defender and going queen c2, queen takes d1. Just winning. For this reason, Instead of going knight to c1, we have to make a very ugly move, going knight to a1. But it's not so bad in practice. We are protecting this weakened spot on c2, and suddenly after knight c5, we can take bishop b4, knight takes and pawn takes. We got rid of the dangerous pawns on the queen side. Our position is more or less solid, we will have this knight c3 square for our pieces, and soon we are planning to play h5, rook h1, and attack on our own on the king side. So with this very ugly but strong defensive move, white is preventing all black's activity on the queen side and getting just a nice game, guys. 
You shouldn't be always thinking about these ideas, but in some occasions it might be working. So if you have tough, hard times defending, keep an eye on the ugly moves as well. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position where they lesson how to use outflanking plus anchoring. We are going to mix the ideas. As we already know what is anchoring, we are doing this firstly with black, giving rook c2 check, king d6 and rook b2. So after a king c5, white king is already going one square break from c6 to c5. As well, our rook is already located on the b file, so we are winning basically two tempos with black. Now, if we try to go from this side, white king will be blocking black's options. For this reason, we are going king a2, using the outflanking idea. So after b5, king b3, b6 and king a4, black is gonna be winning. After king c6, king a5, b7 and king a6, this pawn is lost, so black will be winning. I truly enjoy this idea with mixing the plus, outflanking and anchoring guys. I hope you do as well. Let's go ahead and see the next position. This is a test position for the daily lesson Toxic P2 Pawn in the opening. It's white to move and we are playing bishop e3. We don't care about this pawn on b2. So after queen b2 the question will be how to trap the black queen. It has the square on b4 and b6. The b6 square is not that important, so now we go a3. Threatening just knight a4 and trap this queen. The reason b6 square is not important because after queen b6 we take d5 and this knight is hanging with a tempo, so white is winning a piece. For this reason, after a3, black may try to play b5, preventing knight a4. But since there is no longer b6 square available because of b5 pawn, white goes rook a2 and the queen is again trapped. And at the end, after a3, if black is just trying to take, we take. Now this b6 square is already covered by our bishop. So on the next move, whatever black does, let's say c5. We are going knight to a4 and this queen is gonna be trapped. So white is winning. Sometimes this pawn on b2 is under attack, but it can't be taken by opponent. And like in the game, white is using this and developing the pieces as well as possible, guys. Let's now go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the little lesson vacating squares. Now there is a pin on the c file. If white is trying to go knight to b1 and win this bishop, white is actually losing a material, cause black can take bishop e5. Now this bishop can't be taken cause queen on c1 is hanging. As well this bishop is protecting black queen, so this is a big threat. For this reason knight b1 is just a blunder. And here we are opening very important square for our knight. So white is playing now b6. This is attacking queen with the pawn, so black has to act somehow. Cannot be removing the queen from the c file because bishop is hanging. Queen c6 or c8 doesn't work because we take on a7. So only logical move left is a takes b5. And now we already go knight to b5. Bishop e5 is no longer available because this queen is hanging with the knight, so we will be winning the queen. But otherwise we are just taking bishop on c3. So with the beginning b6 move, white is opening this important square for the knight. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is another test for vacating squares daily lesson. Now, white rook on h3 is pinning the pawn on h7, and for this reason this queen can't be taken. If we imagine for a second there is no black queen on f2, black can play knight f2 check, King g1 knight h3 check and later on white queen will be hanging. Not to force you visualize and show it on the board, we are gonna get rid of black queen, playing queen e1 check. Rook takes e1, knight f2 check. And after king g1, knight a3 check is with the tempo. So after takes and takes, we opened up this square for knight on f2 and eventually stayed with an extra exchange, with an easy winning position for black. Sometimes we're even gonna get rid of such an important pieces like a queen to open up the necessary squares and make our ideas real. Let's go ahead guys and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson the right capture. It's black to move. How to take here guys? If we take e takes d4, 
We are getting rid of our doubled pawns and it seems to be logical. That would be right. But if after bishop d4 we take c takes d4, let's now try to evaluate benefits of this decision. First of all, our pawn on e5 is preventing white from playing to f4, so it can be taken and the next pawn will go to e5. Much more importantly, this pawn is fixing pawn on c2 and opening up the c file, so this is now a huge weakness, which wouldn't be weak if black pawn was on c5 square, so c file would be closed. Black knight is planning to go rook c8, rook c3, next rook to c8, queen may go to queen 7 and enormous pressure on white pawn on c2, so black will have a great game. For this reason, we are deciding to take c takes d4 and this is the right capture in this position guys. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson backward moves with the knight. It's a very interesting situation right now, many pieces are hanging. White pawn is attacking two of black pieces. But the problem is, we cannot be taking any of them because our bishop on b3 is hanging as well. Bishop takes, bc7, rook fc, his pawn on c1 may be lost and black will obtain a good game. If instead of c takes b6, white is trying to take on e6, the problem is that f takes e6 is a tempo, so it's a check and on the next move, black is just capturing on c5, so this is not working as well and bishop e6 doesn't work. So now we are going to the logical move. We need to protect this bishop and protect this pawn on c5 as well. We are making a backward move with the knight, which is not really obvious if you don't go deep into the position. Why the just place knight a1, bishop takes and knight takes b3. Now this pawn is still alive and one of black pieces is gonna be lost, so white is winning. We always need to pay attention to all of our available moves, especially in tough situations. And such a move like knight to a1 may be really making a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson, non-standard breakthrough. It's black to move here. If we try to take on h3, playing gh3, white goes rook h2, takes back the pawn, and this pawn on h5 will be attacked as well. So this is not enough. For this reason, at the beginning, we have to play smarter. Black goes now h4. The thing is that gh4 is now losing due to g takes h3. Now this pawn is under attack, so white plays h5 and rook h4. Meanwhile, we are threatening to play h2, which is forcing white to go rook h2. Pawn on h5 is also under attack, so black takes, and with this very strong extra pawn, black is winning. We'll be advancing with the king, trading of the c-pawn and get the second passed pawn on the c-file. And if after h4 white is playing h takes g4, the same is happening but on the g-file already. We take on g3, rook g2 and rook g4 and we are gonna be advancing with our king, creating the second passed pawn and easily win this game. This rook on g2 will not get any chance to be activated since it has to hold the pawn on g3 guys. Let's now go ahead and see the next one. This is a test position for the daily lesson bishop and rook pawn versus the king. Here it's black to move and black is 3 pawns down, but there is a very beautiful idea which allows black to survive. Beginning with queen f1 check, black is forcing queen c1 move. And suddenly black decides to give away the knight, playing knight a3 check, pawn takes a3. I'm sure you already realized that position after queen c1, king takes c1 and king d7 will be drawish. Black king is gonna be on time to reach to a8 square. And as you know with this bishop, when the color is not matching to the promotion square and these three pawns, white is not gonna be able to do anything. If you don't know why, just check out the daily lesson about this topic, guys. Let's now go ahead and see the next one. This is a Test position for the daily lesson central pawns in the bishop and game. And this is the last daily lesson for the April month. In this position, it's white to move, and we need to make a draw trying to prevent black pawn on d5 being exchanged with our pawn on c3. If we now go bishop b3, this is not working because black has d4, and after c4, black can go king to b4, followed by d3 and d2, 
This pawn will be distracting the bishop and pawn on c4 will be lost, so it will become a draw. For this reason, bishop b3 is a very big mistake at the beginning. So white is playing bishop to d3. The idea is that after d4 and c4, bishop is protecting pawn on c4 at the same time stopping pawn to e4 from the advancement. So after king b4, white goes king e6, king c3 and bishop f1. Now after d3, white will be taking and after takes simply push c5 winning this position. Let me mention that in the position when black just played king to c3, white cannot go king to d5 because black will take on d3 and after c5 will go king to e3. So we will be promoting the queen at the same time and this will be drawish for black. We should be careful guys. So this was the last position one more time and we are finished with our test coverage for the April month. GM Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you for your subscriptions, likes and sharing this video with your friends. We appreciate it a lot. See you next time during our next daily lessons.